friends who could tell me what it is to die. Death, the great neutral, choosing friend or foe. If skies are calm and the dead stars ride high, sometime tomorrow midnight, I may know. Gabriel. Race you to the door. <laughs> Morning, Miss Claudia. Lucky. James. Sorry. Rupert wasn't well this morning. Am I the last? Rather an accurate way of describing life at Peveril Press these days. Like follies, come on then. It's hard to resist a Venetian palace, especially when it's on the side of the Thames. I doubt if we'd say that if we had to work in it. <laughs> yes. Mandy Price. Uh, the Tempin Agency sent me to see Miss Etienne. Ah, that'll be Miss Claudia. Good morning, Mr. Gerard. Morning, Mrs. Temery. Not here, Mrs. Stemmery. All right, I'll find her and send her down. Where is that bloody woman? Morning, Mr. Etienne. When you're quite finished mooning over my predecessor, Miss Blackett, you might see your way clear to starting some work. <clears throat> this way, Miss Price. Two hundred years of the Peveril. Fine collection of rogues, aren't they? Aren't they supposed to be some of the greatest names in the 
history of publishing. People always say publishing is the preserve of gentlemen. Not so. Take our energetic new managing director. Do you know Gerard Etienne? Only by reputation. Henry Peveril died suddenly last year. Gerard came in and took over. The king is dead. Long live the king. Yeah, something like that. And the new monarch has an ego to match his status. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I can't offer you any advice about how to handle him. I'm not a psychologist. Yes, well, that isn't why I asked you to come. We have a prankster. Well, that seems a banal word to describe him or her. Last week I received an anonymous letter, and I don't mind saying I was very disturbed by it. Well, what did it say? Once upon a time you had a talent, a minor derivative talent, but even that has deserted you. You contribute nothing to the press which has employed you for so long, and lacking family and friends, nothing to life. What is the point of your continued, continued existence? Continued existence. Why don't you do us all a favor and save me a tedious chore by terminating it forthwith? This is very unpleasant. Mm, all the more for being so accurate. How old are you? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Well, I'm going to give you a typing test to see if you're as good as you claim. Mr. Dorsey needs to take transcribing. Come with me. This is the room where Mr. Dorsey does most of his work. Oh, oh, the smell. <laughs> And do they all look the same? Same paper, same typeface. What is going on? Mr. Dorsey, would you come up to the archives from this bit of terrible? I shouldn't do that if I were you. Who are you? Gerard, this is a friend of mine, Commander Dalgleish of the Metropolitan Police. How do you do? Well, it seems pretty obvious what's happened here. Is it? Uh, did she have a letter, too? A letter? Not that I'm aware of, no. <gasps> oh, get out! Go on, get out! I think perhaps you all ought to leave. What happens now? Post mortem, then we'll know precisely what we're dealing with. But she killed herself. We don't know that. That's for the pathologist to investigate and the coroner to decide. Gabriel tells me that Miss Clemens was about to leave. Yes, I had to sack her. Restructuring. It happens. Did Gabriel ask you down here because of the letters? Yes. He's an old woman. He had no business involving the police. He received a letter making a threat against his life. I think that's most definitely his business. You have one too, he said. It's nothing. Are these threats, they don't concern you? No, of course they concern me, but they don't frighten me. And what did you say? I rather think that's my business, don't you? It won't be if it turns out that Miss Clements was murdered. Obviously, you've all heard of the tragic news of Sonia's death. She was found dead this morning in the archives room in circumstances which seem to indicate that she committed suicide, though clearly there will have to be an inquest. Of course, I realise how distressing this must be to all of you, but I've just spoken to the police, and it seems evident that the cause of Sonia's death is personal, and nothing to do with events here at Peveril Press. 
Under the circumstances, I think it would be best if we closed the offices at lunchtime as a mark of respect. I'm sure we're all deeply sorry to lose such a valued colleague and friend. That was rash. What? Saying Sonia's death had nothing to do with the film. Claudia, she didn't kill herself because I gave her a push. She knew she had to go from the day I took over. And she knew she wouldn't find another job, not at her age. Innocent House oh, was her life. That's sentimental nonsense. Clearly someone's got a grudge against the firm or the people running it. It's likely that person's an employee. I'm not surprised. Most of the staff here are terrified of losing their jobs. We can investigate, you know, if you want to make a formal complaint. I can't guarantee we'll catch them, but we'll certainly make them aware we're looking. Uh, that usually puts a stop to it. Can we... Can we just leave it for the moment in view of Sonia's death? No, you know where to find me if you change your mind. Thank you so much for coming. Not at all. It was, uh, it was good to see the place again. Did you know there was once another suicide at Innocent House? No. The place was built by Sir William Peveril in 1831. He'd taken his beautiful young bride to Venice on his honeymoon, but found more pleasure in the buildings he saw than in what they did together. So he came home determined to recreate his favourite Venetian palazzo here in Wapping. Used his wife's money to do it. She gradually realised she couldn't compete with his obsession and threw herself off the roof shortly after it was finished. Your iron logic is all very well, but even if she did commit suicide... Of course she did. People will say that you killed her. So you better prepare yourself for the consequences. For God's sake. I need this typing. Perhaps the new girl should do it. Quickly, and no errors. This is hissing Sid. Of course it is. Mr. Henry gave it to me. I told him one day my feet were cold, and he bought me this to keep the drafts out. Such a kind man. Are you a romantic, Kate? Sir? Do you believe a building can be infused with evil? No, sir. <laughs> the personnel report you asked me to look at on D.I. Aaron. I've negotiated a start date with us from his division. Good. Let me have the results of the post-mortem on Sonia Clements when it comes with me. And I want you to go to the inquest for me. Very good, sir. Francis? Oh, hello, James. I, um, just wanted to ask you. Well, it's been such an awful day. I really need a drink. Uh, I wonder if you'd like to join me. Thank you, but I, I can't. Oh. I've got something on. But thanks for asking. It was kind of you. Well, maybe another time.
Coming. Coming. It had better be a good move. You've thought about it long enough. Sorry. Thanks for inviting me up. I needed the company more than the game. I'm glad you missed the staff meeting. Gerard surpassed himself. No. So cold, so unfeeling. The nature of the man, he doesn't care. Well, he should do. He killed her. Francis, you mustn't say that. You must never say that again, promise me. When I was in church, I tried to pray for her. But that, it was impossible. All I could think about was him. How happy I'd been before, before he dumped me. I thought about how we would have run Peveril Press together. The children we might have had. Oh, God, Gabriel, I feel so ashamed. The things you wanted, marriage, children, home, are quite natural desires. You mustn't be ashamed of them. I know, once upon a time I had all three, remember? Oh, I'm so sorry, Gabriel, your poor wife and children. Uh, it was a long time ago. But you never quite get over the loss of a child. James loves you. Well, I think I could have loved James if it hadn't have been for... I mean, I don't even like Gerard. I never did, not even when I wanted him most. And now I hate him. You mustn't. But you hate Gerard too. I don't. Don't feel anything for him. Hate is dangerous, gets in the way of justice. It's the last thing I feel in the evening. And the first thing I feel in the morning. How can I be free of it, Gabriel? Yes? Oh, hello, Adam. I see. Well, thank you for letting me know. I will. Bye. Adam Dalgleish. Sonia died of an overdose.
I was not expecting you. Bonjour, Papa. Ça va? Seems hardly a month since you were last here. Matters are coming to a head at the press. I think I may have found a buyer for the house. Oh, the grand plan. Scolling, the property man. Made a fortune out of systems building, but he's mad about innocent house. He wants to live in it. He seems prepared to pay almost any price. Francis will be unhappy. Well, she's a peveril. For years they've squandered money on that building as though the house was the firm. That's nonsense. It is their way. Well, they no longer run the firm, so what Francis thinks is of no real importance. Do you think it's the right thing to do? I have no opinion. You will do as you think fit. Pevel Press means nothing to me now. <laughs> no. I don't see why you think it's necessary to come all the way down here to give me these reports. Actually, I came to give you some news. Mm. And what would that be? I'm engaged to be married. Her name is Lucinda Norrington. Lady Lucinda Norrington. I see. Second disappointment for Francis. Fast! It's a rather bleak valediction. I'm not sure they'll find much more to say about me when the time comes. I don't think that's true. I know what you're going to say, my poetry, eh? I've always enjoyed your work. That was a very long time ago. Do you know, Original Sin made a big impression on me. I was a fool, you know. I thought I could use a minor talent to exercise the war. You're not writing anymore. Nothing left to say. But I am reading for the first time in years in Greenwich at the Katisark Inn on the 29th, if you feel like coming. Yes, I will. I'm curious. Well, what about? See what I'm still capable of feeling. I have my doubts. Uh, excuse me, I think I'd better go to Frances. She was devastated by that business for the painting. Yes, of course. Hello, where's Mia? Do you two know each other? I wanted to have a word with you about the publication date. What? Of Death on Paradise Island. Oh, that. Now, you know you always publish me in November in time for Christmas, but I haven't had the date yet, nor notification of the launch party. Launch party? I thought as it was a nautical theme, we might use the Maritime Museum in Greenwich. Listen, Esme, the reason you haven't had a date is because we haven't yet agreed to publish. I beg your pardon. There are matters to discuss and resolve. Do you mean? I think we better discuss this at another time and in a more appropriate place. I'll give you a call. Excuse me. Old man Simon. It's not getting any better. He told me today he's definitely going to sell. Oh, yes. I made this shop what it is. He can't sell it to somebody else. I've decided to speak to Gerald to ask him to buy me out. My shares in the press. Claudia, that's... How much? About half a million. More than enough for the freehold on the shop and the two flats. And you do that? You do that for me? No, don't flatter yourself. It's a commercial proposition. I know what I'm buying. When are you going to ask him? After the board meeting next Thursday. Why don't we go out on the river afterwards in the launch and celebrate? Oh, Han! Daisy, Mummy gone to work, is she? Yes, Auntie, has <laughs> Come, please, then. 
There we are. Help yourself to a glass of milk and a biscuit, will you, Daisy? You'll have to amuse yourself. I've got work to do. Can I get one of your murder books in a minute? What's the matter? Has your car gone in for service again? Come and have a look. Thank you. There. Oh, Gerard. Nice piece of abstract expressionism, isn't it? We've got to do something about all this. Oh, don't you start. This is getting really unpleasant. This isn't the work of the letter writer. This is probably some envious little shit of a National Front skinhead. With the key to our garage? Ah, Miss Blackett. This is a private meeting of the partners. We've confidential business to discuss. I'll take my own notes, thank you. Kind. Black has taken notes of the partners' meetings for over 20 years. Wasting her time. And ours. You shouldn't have suggested that we don't trust her. I don't. She might have been responsible for that. Anyway, we're not here to discuss that. More important matters to discuss. The survival of this firm. Scolling has upped his offer for this building by 300 grand. It now stands at two and a half million pounds, a clear million more than the commercial valuation. Now, I propose to accept verbally today and to get the solicitors working on the details so that we can exchange within the month. No, you cannot sell Innocent House. I can. We can. We must, if we're to survive. You can't run an efficient publishing house from a Venetian palace on the Thames. My family has for 160 years. I said an efficient publishing house. Publishing's no longer a hobby for elderly gentlemen with private incomes. It's a business where you make money and make it efficiently or you go under. I will not have it. Fred, it isn't your decision. If just one other partner agrees, then it will happen. You know, I don't see why you're so upset. You haven't any children. It's not as if there's a peveril to inherit. Don't, Francis, don't leave. Innocent house is sold over my dead body. Is that clear enough for you? Oh, Francis, don't be so melodramatic. Of course we're going to sell. By the way, I bumped into Wesley Carling yesterday. I told her we weren't going to publish her wretched book. You had no right. I'm editorial director of this firm. James, it's a crap book and the woman's well past her sell-by date. This is Carl. Where 
busy, then. I don't think you have an appointment, Mrs. Carling. Of course I haven't got a bloody appointment. I'm not some rep selling paper clips. Where is he? He's... He's in the partners' meeting. But... Right! You can't go up. Partners' meetings are never interrupted. Ever. Very well. I'll wait till it's finished. Uh, that may not be for hours. And don't you have a book signing in Southampton at lunchtime? I'll let Mr. Gerard know you called, and no doubt he'll get back to you when he has a free moment. When he has a free moment? You stupid bitch. Who do you think you're talking to? It's my talent that's paid your wages for 20 years. Mrs. Carling, please. Just because you worked for old Henry, he spoiled you. God knows why. How dare you? You don't know what he really thought of you. He told me because I was his friend. He was sick of you hanging around gazing at him like a moonstruck cow. He was sick and tired of you and wanted you out, but he didn't have the guts to sack you. Mm. At least we can rely on Gerard Etienne for that. Tell him I want to see him. At my convenience, not his. It isn't true. You're lying. It isn't true. You stupid cow. Anything about it? Damn woman! I just think it would have been diplomatic to have discussed it with James first. Where's my bloody diary? Sometimes, Claudia, there just isn't time for the niceties. Taking my private diary? Of course not. Isn't it in your right hand drawer? If it were, I should hardly be asking for it. I brought it up to date yesterday and put it back in the drawer. I haven't seen it since. Well, it was there last night. If you haven't taken it, you better find out who has. If you can't find the diary, I should be glad to have the pencil back. It's gold, and I'm rather fond of it. Are you accusing me of theft, Mr. Etienne? Don't be a fool. No one's accusing you of anything. Just get my diary back. For God's sake, get rid of that bloody snake. It makes the place look like a nursery. Sorry, Miss Blackett, it's not exactly your day, is it? Get on with your work. This is Southampton Central. Change here for Romsey and Salt. Thank you for supporting me this morning. Gerard, you know I'll support you when the time comes. But I want you to do something for me first. What? I want you to buy me out, either partly or wholly, I don't mind which. I need 350,000. Why would I want to do that? Because my shares would give you a permanent overall majority. You could do anything you wanted. I can't afford to buy you out. 
I'm sorry, Claudia. I might be interested, but not just now. That's a pity. I need the money now. Why? What for? To invest in the antiques trade. Declan has a chance to buy the shop and stock at a giveaway price. Isn't 350k rather a lot to pay for a pretty fence? Sir. Hmm? Someone's walked in downstairs asking to see you. Who? Miss Peveril. Miss Frances Peveril. She says it's a personal matter. Question? I want to ask you something. Whether you thought Sonia really killed herself. It was the coroner's decision, not mine. Yes, but you were there. You saw her. I wasn't at the post-mortem. One of my officers saw the report and sat through the inquest. It was fairly unequivocal. Death by barbiturate poisoning. There's no evidence anyone else was involved. Do you think otherwise? I don't know. I suppose not. But something's happening in that house, Commander. Something bad. You've heard about my father's portrait and Gerard's car. Yes. Then there are these letters. I have there seen any more? I got mine today. I see. I knew it was coming. I've been having nightmares. You don't want to hear this. No, 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 no. Please, please. Go on. <sighs> well. My mother died when I was three, pneumonia. I was brought up by a nanny living with my father on the top floor of Innocent House. I used to go to school in Greenwich. The chauffeur would drive down the Isle of Dogs and we'd walk under the river through the foot tunnel. Yes, I know it. I didn't tell anyone for years, but I was terrified of that tunnel. So dark and sloping, endless. I was sure the water would break in and would drown. Every day, twice a day for years, I had to face that. I thought it was gone. But now I'm dreaming it all over again. You haven't told me about your letter. What is said? It said that, that I was a disappointment to my father. That he didn't love me. It said I was going to die in the tunnel.
Friends, Gabriel Dawson is one of the most interesting poets of his generation. Despite having published only two collections, he served as a bomber pilot in the Second World War and his poems offer a vivid picture of service life. Would you please welcome Gabriel Dauncey. I'm going to read a poem from my first collection, Original Sin. This is called After Debriefing. His dressing gown hangs limply on a hook, a chair precisely placed, a tidy bed, the table holding coins, an open book placed downwards, the last chapter still unread. After each raid, the nightly dream returns. I see them blown apart, I watch them die. Beneath their shattered wings, the city burns. They fall like torches from the blazing sky. It's friends who could tell me what it is to die. Death, the great neutral, choosing friend or foe. If skies are calm and the dead stars ride high, sometime tomorrow, midnight, I may know. Thank you. I enjoyed your poetry very much. Mm, no, Adam, no good, no bloody good at all. I'm going home. Can I give you a lift? No, th thank you very much. It's very nice of you. I, I think I'll just go for a little walk. I feel like being alone. Thank you. Oh, Gabriel. They didn't get anything. You frightened them off. Oh, you that's a cup. That looks nasty. No, it, it's just a, Oh, it's just a craze. Uh, come on. We'll need stitching. Let's get you to hospital. No, I'm all right, really. Come on. Uh, I want to go home. I... <laughs> come on. Bloody awful day. Well, I enjoyed the reading. It was good to hear the early poems. It's fine work, Gabriel. Thank you for the lift. Gabriel, what happened? Uh, he was mugged. Oh, my God. No, it's not as dramatic as it looks. Oh, well. oh, thank you for bringing him home. Come not on. at all. Good night. Good night. People say it's good for the old to have new experiences. I'm not sure that street crime should be included. Well, come on up. I'll pour you a whiskey. Oh, I must have a bath. I'm aching all over. I'll give you a ring when I get out, and you can come up. Are you sure? Yeah. Come straight up.
I'm just checking round the building. He's bound to be here somewhere. Ah, Miss Claudia. Yes? Uh, this gentleman has an appointment with Mr Gerard at 8.30. Well, I'm sure he won't be long. But he's here. And? But not in his office. His jacket's on the back of the chair, and the front door wasn't double locked when I arrived, so he must be here. Well, this is exactly how it was when I left last night. Oh, I don't like this. Well, we should search the house. Better start at the top. Scotland Yard. Ask for Commander Dalgleish. 